What is up everybody? Today we're in Cape Canaveral because NASA has invited us to check out a behind the scenes look at a SpaceX rocket launch. Crew 4 mission launches next week and we're going to go tour the facilities at NASA that nobody is allowed to go to unless they work at NASA, are part of the media, or are part of this NASA social program. So let's get right to it. This is the bus that's going to be taking us all around. We cannot go in there by ourselves so we have to leave our cars right in this parking lot. This is by the way the media accreditation building where you go and check in if you're a member of the media get your badge and all that good stuff we already got our own so now it's just a waiting game and okay, we're now getting on the bus we just did security check we're all good to go cool force <laughs> it's like the moon and off i was for a full day of activities at kennedy space center with 49 other like-minded people our first stop was the press area which is across the street from the vehicle assembly building that's where NASA assembles all of their rockets. We'll go inside there later in the video, so stick around. All right, we just got off the bus at our first stop. We are going to the press site. We can see SLS from here, Falcon 9. Three rockets. Yeah, we have the VAB vehicle assembly building. We've got a beautiful mural of JFK here, the Saturn V rocket, Apollo missions, and of course, the NASA New Center right ahead. And this is a very rare look. We've got three rockets on the launch pad right now. Two Falcon 9s and the SLS moon rocket that is going to launch Artemis mission back to the moon. Hopefully we get really close to it later on. I know today I want you guys to have a good time. I want you guys to stay focused on the present moment. Take pictures, but just remember, take a deep breath in and be like, oh my gosh, I'm here at Kennedy Space Center. This is really cool. I got to hear from experts themselves talking about the International Space Station and NASA's newest moon rocket, the Space Launch System, which fun fact is slightly taller than the Statue of Liberty. So when you guys see NASA TV live streams of rocket launches, this is where it all gets done. This is behind the scenes. I've actually never been here before. Pretty cool. This is Ron, he's our main engineer. We're hey. trying to, we just did our pre four rehearsal uh, a couple nights ago. So each source corresponds to a button on here. And so I've got 48 inputs that I can play with. Yes, sir. And just like any other live television mm -hmm. event, we have a script. Where we have moderators and hosts and talent in different locations and stuff. And this is a, uh, a paper printout of basically what a rundown of our shows look like. Yeah, because that's real time. Yeah. Yeah. But usually... Is um, the ones we get closer oh, like right. SLS's launch, will that be in 4K too? That is going to be our very first 4K broadcast for our contract. And we're, we are in 4K right now, but we're only delivering in 720p. Okay. That's the current contract that we have right now. Okay. But, okay. Once, but we are contracted to go full 4K on okay. our And that's 4K 60 frames. Okay. So here's a look at the cameras that they use for NASA TV. When you guys watch press conferences in this room, these are the main cameras that they have here. Pretty cool. They are Sony cameras with Canon lenses, 17 to 120. This one's a 25 to 250. Those of you interested in cameras, here you go. Go to the clock down here. All right, guys, check this out. We just left the press building. We have the vehicle assembly building. This is where the SLS rocket, Space Shuttle, Saturn V rocket were assembled. We are standing in front of the famous clock. 39A is right behind it. You guys probably can't see it from here. 39B is right over there, which is where the SLS rocket is currently at. Oh, right. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, the vehicle assembly building in all of its glory. We're about to enter a very historic place that not many people get to visit, and you're coming along with me. We're now going inside the VAB. This place is huge. So this is where they assembled the Space Shuttle, Saturn V, and the SLS rocket most recently. Holy hell. 
just look at this. Uh, largest single story building in the world by volume. It stands 525 feet tall. Um, right now we're standing in what is called the low bay of the building. Um, so what Holy hell, look at this. This is the high bay of the vehicle assembly building. Oh my god. It is huge. I don't know if the camera will pick up the scale of this building, but it is massive. Holy hell. Jesus Christ. It's a little scary looking up there. Imagine being all the way up there. These are actually the shuttle mobile launch platforms. Um, so the space shuttle would ride out on the launch pad. Um, you can kind of see the two smaller rectangles in the back. Those are kind of the flame holes um, for the solid rocket boosters. And then that middle one is for the big orange external tank. And then there's seven vertical doors that open up. So the crawler would actually come right under here, uh, jack it up, and then roll back out. All right, guys, we're taking a stroll inside the vehicle semi building. This is the high bay. We're going now where the SLS rocket was assembled. I've never actually gotten to see. Obviously, I came here a couple years ago and uh, the SLS was not a, a thing. It was a plan, but it wasn't really like constructed or anything. So when I came here, we didn't really see much, but now we are going to where SLS was assembled and obviously rolled out to the launch pad, which we're gonna go later. Check it out. This is where they assembled the SLS rocket. By designing the platforms this way, they won't have to go in and get the high bay again. They can just move them up and down. And it rolled out right through here. Of course, at the center of it all is the Artemis logo. This is the Artemis moon mission program. This is basically the successor to the Apollo program, going back to the moon. So it is called Artemis, and they've got the big banner right in the center of the AB. Also outside, if you see right there, facing the outside part, they have it as well. We're heading to the opposite side of where SLS was built. Yeah, so if you look right in there, um, that's a full-scale mock-up of the bottom segment of one of the solid rocket boosters. Uh, essentially, the... Oh, wow. Was able to use it as practice right there. The segments. Um, and when you're out at 39B today, um, for just a sense of scale, just the solid rocket boosters alone, they're about 133 feet tall. Um, Falcon 9 with Dragon on top is only slightly taller. So what do you think? I love it. What's the first impressions? This is like the biggest bucket list of my, <laughs> my life. And it just being inside is truly incredible. It's a piece of history that I'm stepping foot in where the space shuttles and um, the Apollo missions were in. And it's just, this is a history that I just <laughs> never forget. It's my kind heart, of surreal just looking up, right? It is. And my heart is just pounding right now. <laughs> and I'm like, my whole body is filled with emotions right now. Oh. I just can't stop smiling just being in here. I'm glad you like it. I mean, yeah, I would love it. it's it crazy. I don't know how I don't know how the workers here are getting like. I'm sure it's never like gonna get old. The feeling of coming into work in here. All right, so this will never not get old. As you guys heard, it is a surreal feeling being in here. This is my second time. Um, it just feels like my first right now, honestly. It's just so surreal. They're gonna take a group photo just the ladies. So I'm gonna step over here. Yeah, it's a great feeling coming in here. If you ever have the chance to apply for a NASA social event, it doesn't matter how many followers you have, just have a big interest in space flight and space, everything NASA, uh, SLS, SpaceX, whatever it is. Just show an interest and you may get chosen and you may come inside this beautiful building that is so damn tall. By the way, I consider myself lucky because I've been to four NASA socials now and I've only been one other time so they don't always bring you in this building and when they do this is absolute privilege and i yeah just taking it all in now guys with the space launch system the tower actually rolls with the rocket um so you'll see that once you get out there so they place that um it's about 322 feet tall um so bigger than the statue of liberty uh they place that on top of the crawler transporter and then they roll straight this way. It's about four miles um, to get to the launch pad. Um, for Space Launch System, they travel at 0.8 miles per hour. Um, so it does take them about eight to 10 hours to actually get out to the launch pad. Um, once you get to the pad, you'll see there's actually an incline to get up on the pad surface. Um, the crawler can actually jack the back of it so that it keeps it perfectly level. Obviously, you don't want a rocket that size tipping over. It's not a good day. This is a wall signed by most of the workers who worked on the Space Shuttle program. They've all signed their names here. It's quite a lot. It says, an American treasure, the space shuttle. 
just left the VAB vehicle assembly building sign right behind me and it's so bright outside compared to inside there. Alright guys, we are at the press site. Sorry, I, we just ate so had some great food. It was alright. But we are now at the press site to watch a Falcon 9 Starlink launch. Hopefully in about 30 minutes. We're all sitting here now waiting for the launch. <laughs> Big tripod, little tripod. Oh wow. That was just incredible. Kind of caught me off guard because I usually like watch it on the live stream, but I was paying attention to my phone and getting everything right for you guys so you guys can see the video. It was just surreal. This is the closest I've ever been to a rocket launch, four miles. So you were able to feel the sound and it was just so loud and like 75 degrees with the chills that I had throughout the entire launch. It's like it, it was freezing outside. I was just like chills like non-stop so we're now inside i believe the international space station processing facility go ahead walk on in everybody this is the veggie lab so they process different kinds of plants and research things that go to the international space station which we're about to learn about in this case we have them under a treatment where they're growing with optimal amount of water um, as well as a treatment where they're in drought and flood. Because in uh, space, you may not know, the hardest thing about watering is that you have lower convection. So everything becomes even more sticky and it can drown the roots as well as mm -hmm. the leaves. This is our maker space. Um, my schooling, I go, I'm go. i an engineer by education. Uh, when I, I applied for an internship to come work here at Kennedy Space Center and ended up being a scientist. A lot of these experiments that we're doing have never been done before. So many times they need like a solution or hardware that hasn't been built. Um, and along the way, if you can use CAD drawing, 3D printing, rapid prototyping to get that stuff done, then, then it, it makes it happen a lot easier. And that's what we do here. So if one example was PHO4, which grew peppers in space. We needed, it's a long-term crop. We've grown leafy greens up until now, which is 28 days, and that's cool. But peppers take longer, 80 days to 120 days. We ended up growing 130 days. That ended up leading to a problem with salt formation along where the stems were. And then over time, the stem would rot out and the plant would fall. So we're like, oh, we, how do we get the salt to go away from the stem? We opened the wicks up. So this is just a 3D printed peg. These are crew wiper wicks, the, the, the wicks that the crew uses as, as like a, a paper towel. In a way, it's made out of plastic, it has a wetting agent, and it was easy for us to get approved to go on the space station. But So we use that as the wicks and we open them up so any evaporation pulls the salt away. So in microgravity, you don't have gravity to uh, pull all the, like, the substrate down. So for example, if you try to pull a root out, it's going to create a big mess. Like all the, uh, all the arcelite that he was talking about earlier is just going to float away. And that's a big contamination problem that the people managing the ISS are not accepting. So we need to come up with kind of a clever way to try to pull the roots out while maintaining integrity of the, of the media. So something I've designed over the past few months is basically this uh, threaded system. So this is a cap. Uh, or this is the lid to the uh, science carrier. So we're going to grow lettuce like you see here. And uh, the lettuce is going to grow. We're going to harvest it. And it's as simple as once it's harvested, you can screw this in. And it'll, I'm not going to screw it all the way in, but it'll dig into the media. And it'll create basically a core of media and roots that you can screw it in. Pop this inner cylinder out, pull it out. 
and you have a cylinder full of root and substrate uh, sample, just bag it up, throw it in the freezer, and then we'll get that uh, on the ground so we can study that. So that's that's just one thing that I've been working on since I've been here just the past few months. Here is all of the things that, the, that looks like lettuce right there. These are all the experiments they are working on. This scientist, and I wish I noted his name, was my favorite speaker. To summarize everything he talked about, basically from a food perspective, we currently don't have a way of keeping crew alive on a journey to Mars. So they are researching in this very lab ways to sustain long duration missions, experimenting with various plants as you heard earlier. They started with the International Space Station and microgravity. Next will be a space station orbiting the moon, which will be called Gateway, and eventually on to Mars. We are now inside a gift shop, which is inside the space station processing facility. And there's, it's pretty small compared to the visitor complex one, but they still have a good deal of items. We are now on our way to launch pad 39B where SLS rocket sits. This is where the crawler transported the rocket to the launch pad. Right on this pebble path right here, you can see both sides of it. I'm literally walking on the gravel that the crawler goes on. And we are outside of launch pad 39B where the SLS moon rocket sits. It's gonna go roll back to the VAB shortly. And by that, I mean like next week. The crawler is actually right here, which will be the method of transportation. had some bites and drinks. The bar is super nice. It's called the Space Bar. It's attached to the Marriott Hotel. The VAB that we showed you earlier is right over there. Some launch pads. Great spot to have a drink and a bite while watching a rocket launch. And here's a view of the SLS rocket at night from the Space Bar. Guess I'm still here. Still have to drive back home three hours to Miami. Jesus, but I've had a wonderful time here in Cape Canaveral. I'm in the lobby of this hotel and it is brand new. They've got a lot of space themed things here in this very nice bar area. This hotel is so cool. There's an actual NASA gift shop right next to all the snacks. It's so cool, actual Kennedy Space Center things. So if you're a big space fan and you're not going to Kennedy Space Center, you can still get something right here in the lobby. Attending this NASA social has been an absolute honor and a blast. I really appreciate NASA having this program so casual folks like myself could get the chance to explore areas not normally open to the public. You don't have to be tech savvy or an influencer with a bajillion followers to get selected. Just having an interest in learning more about NASA and its partners is sufficient. Although the main purpose of this is to share with your followers what they're teaching you so expect to post a lot. They don't open up NASA socials for every launch, so to stay up to date on when the next application opens, I've added their social media handles to the description of this video. Best of luck, and I'll catch you in the next one.